Вітання усім на Good afternoon everyone. Our topic for today is gender equality in Ukrainian politics. Our guests are Anna Berzila, public activist executive director of NGO Center UA, Anna Davgopol, coordinator of the gender diplomacy program, Enrico Bell Foundation, Helena Yenna, head of the women leaders program of the National Democratic Institute. We are waiting for Svetlana Zalishuk, member of the parliament, Svetlana Hutka, sociologist, uh, um, you World Foundation, social indicators, NGO, Alexander Chernyanka, member of the Parliament of Ukraine, Natalia Shulga, scientist, deputy of Kiev City Council. And uh, this discussion is moderated by Irina Slavinska, journalist, coordinator of the campaign, Pavaga, producer of radio culture. Thank you. We are going to start today. We have uh, this wonderful team that we've gathered here and we now are going to consider this topic this is gender equality in ukrainian politics uh, this is a really important topic our discussion is um, under umbrella of the contest uh, uh, stop censorship and uh, for me this is really pleasant um, that this contest uh, uh, has the topic um, um, women equality and politics and this topic is discussed now and uh, we are going to um, consider this topic from different uh, perspectives um, and uh, for the start, I believe we should uh, go to the topic of Ukrainian politics, and I give the floor to Alexander Chernyanka. Uh, so, and uh, the first question is, do we have enough women in Ukrainian politics? Good afternoon, dear colleagues. To answer this question, first of all, we should understand what enough really means and uh, what can be considers, uh, considered as an uh, example, good example. So in the parliament we have 12.5% uh, uh, of women, and I would say that most of these women who are deputies in the parliament, the prevailing majority of them, they are so bright that it looks that we have more women in the parliament because of their good presentations. They are not gray moss. And uh, I have been in the parliament for three years. And uh, if I can name 150 deputies, it would be good, but we have more than 400 deputies. But I can name all women in the parliament. Uh, and uh, this shows this, uh, that this work, it depends on personalities, uh, not on gender. There shouldn't be any discrimination. And uh, I uh, if we are speaking about discrimination in the country, maybe we do not have uh, such a big problem, but there should be proper incentives. This is the case. And uh, if we are speaking about the number, and uh, we may take examples from European Parliament. They have uh, higher figures uh, in Scandinavian countries. And uh, so they have some incentives, some guarantees of women's participation in political life. And uh, they are realized through quotas uh, in the voting lists. Uh, in some countries, they got rid of uh, these quotas, and now they have it as an element of uh, political culture. I believe that Ukraine is moving in the right direction. And uh, if we're sp 
speaking about some legislative initiatives and prospects concerning the changes of legislation and uh, I'm an expert on this, and I would like to say several words about public opinion and the public and the, uh, the opinion of elites, decision makers. And in recent years, we have seen considerable progress, and uh, uh, we have been discussing these issues uh, concerning. Uh, um, electoral uh, legislation and five years ago we worked uh, on changes to electoral legislation and we worked on the electoral code and now it is registered and uh, we worked on it uh, uh, ten years ago there were some proposals about uh, quotas and they um, sounded uh, exotic and uh, International experts uh, told uh, us about these quotas, and these were the recommendations of the Council of Europe and the OECE to uh, increase uh, the representation, um, uh, women's representation in the parliament and power. And uh, um, there were even some. Uh, comments, uh, uh, some uh, ironic comments, uh, but now people see that this is not something exotic. And uh, I would like to repeat that the law on local elections, uh, according to which we carried out the last elections, we had such quotas, but uh, there was no responsibility uh, for non-implementation, and uh, there should be not less than one third of um, uh, uh, each of uh, the genders, uh, but uh, and not all the parties adhere to this legislation, but uh, many parties, they tried to adhere to this legislation, some of them not, uh, but they had representation of women, and if we take average number, through the parties, some of them gave even more than according to the quota. So we had these 30 percent, and I believe that this is a, a serious progress, and uh, this is not about numbers. This topic now is really important, and uh, the Supreme Council voted for this. And parties, uh, they started also to adhere to these quotas. And um, uh, we've made a big step and uh, also some breakthrough happened in the public views about the prospects. There are several legislative initiatives that uh, want to improve the situation, the registered draft law that provides quotas to introduce changes to the current legislation. This is about the parliamentary elections. And also, in the first reading, the deputies voted for the draft of electoral code that is now uh, is considered by the working group. And uh, there is uh, an article that envisages that uh, in each five, um, in the in each group of five, there should be two people of uh, the same gender, two men and three women, or three men, uh, two uh, uh, women. So, and uh, uh, in uh, this will provide not less than four people in uh, uh, each group of. So, uh, not less than four women in the group of ten. So, not less than 40 percent, not 30 percent as it was before. Now, this is 40 percent. Uh, so, also some amendments were submitted. Uh, they wanted to cancel this norm, but as a head of the working group, I this. Uh, uh, amendment won't pass, and uh, I do not know how they are going to vote uh, uh, but in the hall, but uh, there shouldn't be, maybe there will be some 
um, uh, questions from Svoboda or majoritarian candidates, but I believe that uh, no one uh, will be against it uh, finally and it will be adopted. Uh, so if uh, there is uh, such a representation and uh, uh, when the lists uh, uh, are open so the voters they will give their own preferences so if there are 40 percent of women in the lists uh, so we can provide this but the voters can decide then uh, so uh, women will be able to participate in the uh, electoral campaign and they should prove that they are better and to uh, convince the voters to vote for them and uh, uh, it is easier to uh, provide this quota for uh, closed lists because uh, uh, the party can influence on this and uh, maybe i took too much time and uh, maybe i will answer some questions later thank you very much now specifying questions speaking about prospects in this draft law yes speaking about uh, is the uh, responsibility envisaged in this draft law? So this is the precondition. So not not responsibility, but whether they register or they do not register the party. So this is the clear requirement for the registration of the party as the entity of the electoral process. We were joined by Svetlana Zalichuk, member of the parliament, and uh, I believe uh, and. Uh, I asked um, um, Alexander about the women in the parliament and their number, and Alexander told us about the experience of local elections, and uh, this experience uh, has shown that uh, uh, women w were uh, able to be elected uh, due to these quotas, and we know that uh, if we go up, uh, there is more money and more influence and less women. So uh, do women really want to go on the top to the highest power? Uh, from my experience in different spheres, I meet women who are ready to be leaders at the national le level, especially in the recent years, uh, in times of war women are really active as volunteers they help men in the armies of the war it became a very powerful driver uh, to be active and uh, this is the issue of stereotypes but from the other side i believe that this is the key aspect and this is economic factor uh, the to be in the parliament this is the matter of the money and uh, um, some uh, about 15 percent of deputies uh, they are in the parliament uh, uh, just to serve uh, and uh, this happened uh, uh, due to the revolution of dignity, people uh, work to really so serve people. And uh, but uh, other deputies, uh, they are there uh, due to the money. And uh, um, you know that Akhmetov, uh, Kolomoisky, uh, Galubov, Pinchuk, and several others, Firtash, uh, Lyovachkin, and uh, these men they involve to the politics those people who are really active and this economic factor it plays uh, the major role here and uh, i have a negative experience uh, about the attitude of youth towards the gender quotas and I meet with young people and I ask them do you support gender quotas and uh, only 30 percent of young people they support these quotas when I ask uh, why uh, 
They say that it is not democratic, this is not a natural selection, and they love freedom, and uh, they are proud, and they are against such principle. But the world uh, experience shows that uh, in order that people started to elect uh, more actively women to parliaments, in order that women um, really were able to go to the top uh, positions, uh, there should be proper role models. But this is uh, the circle, so there are stereotypes, and uh, people are moving in circles, and the society do not provide preferences to women, and the women are afraid to go on top positions because they believe that this work is not for them. And uh, my recent positive experience, I have met uh, with an interesting person from Mauritania, this is uh, the country in um, Africa, 100% Muslim country, and they have 50% of women in the parliament. This was political decision. They had democratic uh, revolution, and uh, they made such a decision, political decision, to introduce gender quotas. And this is Muslim country with uh, uh, patriotic, uh, uh, patriarchic culture, but the experience shows that uh, the society uh, really like this, and women, they have active role in this country, and they were able to represent women in the parliament, and uh, they have many economic, cultural, and social problems. And uh, I believe, this is my personal position, that uh, gender quota is the efficient instrument to quickly resolve this historic problem, this gap that exists uh, in human civilization, including in Ukrainian society. And uh, one more question. So what can be done in order that uh, political parties provided enough uh, financial resources to candidates, women candidates? Um, and uh, uh, so there is such a problem with the financing. So I would like to say about positive things. Um, the law on uh, state financing of parties, and I co-authored this law, it envisages that uh, if party has 30% uh, of women, that they, they can have 10% uh, more from the budget, and uh, uh, there is only one party like this. This is Samu Pomic. So they had the experience to uh, in getting such money. And this is positive sanction, not negative sanction. This is uh, uh, not punishment. This is incentive, and uh, I believe this is a good instrument in order that parties uh, attracted more women to politics. And the second one. Now you are speaking about internal distribution of financing within the party. This is not only about gender, this is about internal democracy and uh, democratic decision taking and the parties. Uh, it's not about some people who take decisions, but it is about uh, accountability and uh, proper decision making by all the participants uh, and uh, when the board, the council, the political council, when they represent all the members of the party and uh, in such parties they do not abuse uh, these gender issues and in, in such parties uh, they properly deal with these issues. So you cannot uh, bring this issue of gender out, uh, outside the common framework of decision making in the sphere. So, uh, and uh, uh, I would like to give the floor to our next guest, and she is going to tell us about the contest uh, Stop Censorship and uh, maybe 
also she will explain to us why this issue is uh, highlighted now. So, um, sorry for delay, I attended the meeting concerning electoral law and we've discussed uh, gender quota issues and, and uh, together with uh, Marichka and one more colleague, we entered the hall and people were surprised and the uh, people discussed gender imbalance. What was the matter? There were three women experts and in the hall there was a different proportion in the representation, especially those who represented uh, uh, top partners and uh, we should break stereotypes and, uh, we sh uh, and sometimes we should prove that uh, we have equal um, rights and uh, um, this year we have a fifth contest but for the first time we are speaking about uh, gender in the politics and um, the topic of uh, uh, this uh, contest is uh, women equality and politics and uh, uh, on our side uh, we um, um, want to create a public discussion and uh, uh, we believe that this topic should be started and uh, uh, political parties they start to search um, candidates women candidates closer to elections and uh, they uh, try to provide these quotas and but they do it uh, too late and uh, at the local level they can find these women candidates and they can form a proper list and, uh, and now these women they can choose uh, the parties to make big politics and uh, after expert jury uh, will um, select the winners they will travel and will deliver speeches at different platforms they will negotiate we will break stereotypes and uh, uh, we will break uh, the stereotypes connected with the uh, gender and uh, as a conclusion we want to inspire political parties and uh, we want them to sign um, um, a memorandum and uh, parties that are democratic, they should have a gentleman's agreement and uh, they uh, can have a balanced list of the parties. So I would like to ask about your opinion about the uh, uh, draft law and uh, what opinions uh, you heard about this draft law. So we've discussed open lists, uh, um, open regional lists uh, and uh, the code that was voted for in the first uh, uh, reading and how it will provide the uh, 40% uh, quote and uh, um, this will be good conditions in order to form the parliament with better balance uh, more than now, more than 20%. And um, the more you speak about women, the women and politics, when you start it's like uh, uh, Gandhi, they think that you are rom romantic, but uh, when you uh, put arguments, the, m the more votes you get from the men in this conversation, and um, uh, it is more difficult to say that, uh, 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 it is more difficult to say why not. And I believe that we are on the right way, and I believe that this meeting also promotes this dialogue. So you've mentioned uh, uh, this idea. Let's uh, uh, fantasize uh, how would uh, 
the Supreme Council look like if gender quotas were in place. I believe that uh, the uh, presence of uh, the um, uh, deputies, uh, uh, it would be better because uh, women le uh, skip the sessions less. They are more public. They, uh, uh, I believe that the parliament will be more responsible, more disciplined concerning parliamentary ethics, concerning uh, battles, uh, or maybe it would be interesting to watch. Uh, what I wanted to add maybe there should be uh, there would be more children in the children's room and it is great that they've opened this room in the parliament but uh, there should be proper role of the media um, how they uh, uh, ask the deputies for example they ask women to tell the, appear, uh, the, the opinion, but they comment on the appearance, not on the opinion. So if we had more women in the parliament, maybe they would ask uh, uh, women deputies not about their looks, but about their ideas. So I spoke with uh, several deputies, uh, women, um, they said that they are often asked about uh, um, Christmas cakes, about recipes, not about politics. And uh, uh, there should be proper candidates for uh, the lists. And people say, where can I find uh, this percentage of women to put them on the list? But uh, uh, there is such a question. Are Ukrainian voters ready to vote for women? And uh, uh, now I give the floor to Alena Yenna, head of the Women Leaders Program of the National Democratic Institute. And I know that you've studied this issue, whether people uh, will vote for women. Thank you, Irina. Thank you, dear colleagues on the panel. So. I heard many interesting opinions, and I would like to deliberate on that. First, I would like to answer your question. We regularly study uh, the thoughts of Ukrainian voters concerning this, whether people vote for women. So there is some sort of uh, myths. We started systemic work with political parties. This was many years ago, about 10 years ago, in the framework of our programs at our institute. And uh, what we heard uh, from the leaders of political parties, uh, and uh, these are mainly men, and we decided to study this issue in depth and to use different methods of research of public opinion in order to understand whether it is true in Ukraine. And now I can assure you that the gender of the candidate really doesn't matter for Ukrainian voters. We put the same question in several cycles of our survey and in the framework of our national surveys. And the gender of the candidate as a factor of electoral behavior it is in the framework of statistical error. For two or three percent of voters, it really matters. And other factors are moved forward. What is really important for Ukrainian voters, we decided to verify our theory that people vote for women in Ukraine, we decided to use different methods. We carried out an experiment, the participants of which they didn't know that this is the experiment of gender issues. We divided them into large groups. And uh, uh, there were several res uh, thousand respondents uh, who participated in Kiev and at all national 
level, we divided our respondents in two big groups, and we've proposed some imaginary candidates. One group got a photo of the candidates, women, and others got men candidates. And we've proposed to uh, the such a legend that these candidates, men and women, uh, they um, fight corruption, and we've proposed to vote for these candidates uh, starting from 0 to 10 scale. So no difference they, um, uh, in Kiev and at the level of Ukraine, there was no difference. So in order to reinforce our argument, arguments, this is about the issue, whether we have enough women in the parliament, it should be decided by voters. But in order to select, to vote, there should be enough women candidates. And according to our recent national poll, 52% of our respondents believe that both men and women have equal right to be participants of political life. 7% out of this number believe that women should be included to political life even more. And all these figures, they clearly show that Ukrainian voters are ready to vote for women if they have them on the list. And for this, a lot should be done. So we've said how political parties can change the situation. They remain gatekeepers uh, uh, for getting into politics, but for women it is much more difficult to open these gates than for men. And there is a discrimination practice and the discrimination strategies implemented by the parties, but I believe, and I dealt with this issue for more than 15 years, and during the last five years, there were some changes, including structural changes at the level of institutions that give us hope that the situation will change for the better and faster than it changed before. And uh, the behavior of political parties with which we worked, and this is the whole political spectrum of Ukraine, it gives us hope the parties now take care and about uh, the number of uh, female candidates n now, and uh, we have about a year before the next uh, elections, and I believe they learned the lessons of uh, local elections, and they do not want to chase uh, situational candidates. They want to uh, upbring those candidates in their own political parties. They want to preserve uh, political uh, ideas of the political force, and uh, they want uh, that these candidates be the uh, representatives of uh, these political forces, and there are special um, programs for these women, and there is a selection of the candidates. I cannot say about uh, the uh, mass of these processes, but we have positive dynamics if we compare the situation with the situation that we faced four years ago. And we do everything possible to help uh, the parties in this process. And uh, we believe that in Ukraine that there are many qualified candidates, and uh, we can fill in these quotas, and uh, the, our women are more educated than men, and we do not have uh, problems with proper training. 76% uh, of our respondents categorically disagree that women are not presented in the politics that they are not because they are not qualified. Uh, 
68% believe that the parties, they are more prone to nominate men. So the problem lies in the, the um, pre-election period. And it is impo important that those trends, positive trends, that uh, they would uh, remain. And uh, also uh, we can speak about one more argument, uh, so um, about uh, grassroots level, it was uh, before the decentralization process in the context of decentralization, the situation changes. And uh, uh, in this, the situation does not change for the better. If we consider all the communities that uh, were united uh, among these uh, communities, only 15% are women. If we compare with what we had at the level of the councils, uh, uh, these are different numbers. So now we have resources there. So. Uh, they have resources uh, and uh, they fought for these resources at higher level. Now all the, these resources came to the local level and these are huge resources and this is the challenge for politicians at the local level. And uh, the um, contest, uh, the competition now is really acute there and they try to remove women from the positions that uh, have these resources. And um, I believe that uh, political forces should think about uh, these matters. Uh, and uh, some uh, candidates, they uh, deliver independent campaign. Uh, they nominate themselves, not as representatives of political forces. And uh, here we see that fr uh, from the one side, this is a problem. And uh, we believe that now the parties, they woke up. And this is the second year of unification of territorial communities. And I believe that the main parties, the main players of our political field, they pay more attention to the elections at the level of the communities and uh, they prepare the candidates for these elections and these elections they are ongoing. So we have changes and there are changes for the better and for the worse, but we should preserve positive dynamics because what is going on uh, in the information area concerning gender issues in politics and our today's discussion is the proof of this. This is the good environment that provides uh, opportunity for good constructive dialogue. And uh, it is important to speak about quotas, uh, the quotas and uh, the overall comprehensive understanding among voters, especially among young voters. Uh, this necessity um, of quotas, this won't be reached uh, in the majority of population because uh, the question was put in this manner. So if you s ask uh, whether you want to see Ukrainian politics more balanced, where men and women are more equally represented, I believe you would get more positive answer. Because quotas, uh, uh, they are seen as uh, discrimination. And uh, I believe that uh, we won't see the support at the national level, uh, even in the most progressive societies. Uh, so we are going to continue to speak about politics at the local level. And I give the floor to um, um, Anna Davgopol, uh, uh, coordinator of the Gender, uh, democracy, pro gender democracy Program. And uh, um, I I am really interested in the topic she will represent. So I would like to give the floor to Anna. And uh, uh, we would like to see this prospect. How would um, 
our cities and villages change if women uh, contributed more, if they had more resources to improve the situation. So I thought about this issue while preparing for this discussion. My colleague went to Vienna, the colleague uh, who dealt with the, the issues of urbanization, and she attended uh, some trainings. They, uh, this was about uh, uh, urban development and uh, they um, studied why Vienna is uh, the uh, uh, highly developed um, city and uh, if you visited uh, um, Vienna you would see that the center street is really long and um, when I was in Vienna, I felt really comfortable. There were many shops, a cafeteria. You can walk, you can go by bike, and uh, uh, the street looked so organic. And uh, uh, this is a recent project, and the local deputy uh, deputy of local council, uh, she thought for this, Renata Kaufman, her name is, uh, before this, they didn't have this pedestrian street, and uh, she said that uh, uh, they should have the street because women would feel comfortable and other citizens would feel comfortable there. And uh, for nine years, uh, she spoke with the uh, local administration and citizens, and now the street is is really a site uh, seeing attraction. Uh, so this is really important for women. She, as a woman, she had her female experience and she said about uh, to the things that are important uh, for women and this is about why gender is important for politics. Uh, I disagree with my colleague who said that gender uh, doesn't matter in politics. I believe that uh, gender influences the politics and uh, we understand that that uh, the cities are built by men traditionally. Fortunately, now we have more women in this, but nevertheless, uh, the um, cities are more oriented on cars because men often travel by cars. Men who are in power, they build cities for themselves. And those who walk, these are women who have young children. They uh, uh, walk uh, uh, with the strollers and uh, if you have children and you walk with the stroller it is really difficult and I do not have children I have a bike and it is really difficult to travel because our city is not good for is not uh, good for uh, those who have stroller or a uh, wheelchair or uh, bike. So, um, in order to understand uh, the situation, you should have direct experience or you should have people uh, around you who can remind you about this. and. Uh, if a person, if a man does not have this experience, they are not concerned about it. If uh, there is an automobile lobby, they say the most important are roads for cars, they say. And this is the example how women, while being in power, they can influence in a different way on the well-being of the community. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, women, politicians, they do not only deal with social issues, they deal with uh, all the spectrum, but this representation of people who live in society, because politics is about different groups in society, and they should have their representatives in power who establish the rules of the game for the whole society. And this is honest, 
and fair at this level. It is fair to have 50% of women in the parliament because in Ukraine we have more than 50%, 51 or 52% of women in Ukraine. That's why it is logic. And we can continue our discussion, we can speak about the gender, but we may also speak about the representation of other groups, those who can have different experience of living in the country because they are the members of some groups and they have their special experience. So why gender is important and why women representation in the government is important? It is important also because the, it is symbolic. If we have women in politics, people go, get accustomed to see that women can carry out policy. Sometimes uh, politics is seen as some dirty work. Elena, you've mentioned interesting facts that the voters support women despite gender. It is weird for me, but it is a pleasant surprise. And we see that now we have several children's books uh, that uh, um, th this is done by her. Uh, that women can uh, really contribute and it shows that there is a request for role models in order that girls would see that women can participate in politics. If we read posts on Facebook and if we look through the comments concerning gender issues, so uh, there are some comments that women are less clever and they should be in the kitchen and we have a lot of comments like this. And uh, I would like to comment on quotas. For me, this was a really controversial issue. From one side, it looks as a preference to some group. And in ideal society, there shouldn't be such quotas. But our idea, uh, society is not uh, ideal and affirmative action. It is um, a definite means uh, to help the group that for a long time was removed from the start. If we imagine that people, they travel for, from some place, so the women, they were moved away and they had a lot of obstacles even to get to the starting point. And the reproductive labor and the uh, upbringing of children, this is the area of women's work and these are the obstacles on the way of women because it takes really a lot of time and uh, um, someone has to uh, cook, someone has to take care of children. Of of course, uh, these quotas, maybe they can be as a temporary measure and in some time they won't be necessary. But let's we introduce it first and then we will fantasize when we won't, uh, won't need it. So Anna said about books that are devoted to the topic of other role models for girls and young women. and. Uh, that the time has come and uh, we have fruitful time for this dialogue that Alena mentioned and uh, there is also growing response uh, and attacks on lectures um, and uh, on marches on the 8th of March and physical aggression and several times a week we see such information in the media. So we discuss gender equality in Ukrainian politics, and now I give the floor to the next speaker, and Natalia Shulga, scientist deputy of Kiev City Council. And uh, here we have a lot of issues we can discuss. 
And briefly, we may say about women in Ukrainian science and in academy of science on the board, there is only one woman. So for a long time, we have one woman and uh, yes, in the uh, board or on the board, we had one woman. And uh, then this issue was discussed, and they tried to improve statistics. And uh, now they have 10 w uh, women in the Academy of Sciences. But uh, first, of course, we should start uh, discussing. And so also the work in the Kiev uh, uh, City Council and uh, uh, in the diplomatic sphere and uh, the uh, topic of uh, women in science. So in science, the situation is the same as in the whole society. At the lower level, the representation of women is normal. And when we are speaking about uh, the leadership and at the level of the departments at the National uh, Academy of Sciences or uh, other academies, so we have a bad situation because these are closed men's club. Women are not allowed there, and uh, the practices prevent decision making of women in the spheres. Um, the situation is like this. I would like to tell you more about politics because this is our topic women in politics. And for me, it is easier to speak about it because. Um, I am a member of some Pormich faction, and before this, the leadership of the party, they were a step ahead, and not because of quotas or due to some external factors. The leadership, the initiators, they were conscious of the fact that women should be represented. And I had the list of some Pormich in the first local elections to Kiev City Council, and we had five of us, uh, uh, me and four men, and this party appeared uh, several uh, weeks before elections in Kiev. So Sadovy was really wise. He clearly understood that this woman who knows about science, about education, that uh, she will be able to help the party to go into power. And it shows that uh, a quality of people who are in politics is really important. And in our society, the environment is like this, that uh, people, they do not uh, see that politics is um, really a place where people should take decisions in order to improve the lives of people. Everything else is not politics, it's something else. And the example of Samopomic at local elections and the elections to the Supreme Council, it showed that uh, women are not just equal, they are brilliant, they are professional, and they are ready, and uh, they take the load, the burden, and not all the men can take this load, this is true. And this example, I'm really proud that I am a part of this example, and uh, we should be wise, clever, and brave, and uh, to make these steps despite quotas and everything else. When we speak about this legislation about quotas, people forgot about the Swedish example. And recently, in the Kiev City Council, we had the delegation of women who went to Sweden concerning gender issues, and I asked uh, how it happened that you have 40 or 60, depending on the places, that uh, there is such a good uh, representation. The Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, is a woman, and uh, there were several rotations of uh, uh, women on this position, and they decided that uh, the, there won't be quotas, there will be just practice. Uh, there will be men, women, men, uh, men, women, men, women on the list. And uh, people just uh, got accustomed to pay attention to this and to study the biography and the uh, information about each deputy. 
And uh, this is a practice now, and society just got it and practiced it each year without any quotas. Imagine this is a simple thing. The decision of the political council was made. They just made the lists in such a way, and people pay attention to each candidate and this uh, thing that each two should be of different gender, it reminds me of Swedish example, but I believe that we should go through this instrument because uh, our society is paternalistic and in its practices it uh, didn't accustom to use the potential um, and wisdom of the opposite sex. And in the council, also, we made a difference for the first time, together with Ms. Mas uh, Nazarova, Nazarov, we've created a union of women for equal opportunities. No matter to, uh, to what party you belong, women get united. And uh, our main document that was adopted, despite the opposition that existed in the hall. This was the code of ethical behavior of uh, deputies, because we believed that we spent our time and we watched the struggles, the blockings uh, of rostrum and the uh, waste of time. And uh, I took minutes and uh, I just um, noted uh, um, the time, all the take and the two deputies took 90% of time. They believe that all the country should hear only them and they made some fights and sitting on the first row, they even attacked me. They didn't see what they did. They uh, broke my uh, tablet uh, and uh, after this uh, there were some actions and uh, but in some parties, they do not have women. And uh, for example, Svoboda believes that women shouldn't be in politics. So they shouldn't be anywhere. And they continue this practice, but in a more restricted way. So there is progress. And uh, following our example, the Supreme Council also made this in uh, uh, union. And uh, we heard about the experience of Vienna. And you know, there is a chin, uh, Mr. Stanka gave birth to a child, but we do not have such a room for children. And the Supreme Council, they uh, went ahead and they created such a room, and this is practice. What is good for society? And in Sweden, for example, they uh, know that women are equal. They even do not discuss such issues. And in our society, people continue to insult to, uh, it looks like 17th century. There is this lack of political culture and consciousness and uh, the uh, proper modern views, the lack of modern views. So. Uh, we should have different approach to this, and I believe that our legislation will establish proper framework for this, and all this criticism should be uh, restrained, uh, so we should use the proper instruments to stimulate, to make incentives for people to change the practice. And about the representation of women in science, there is a closed uh, club because there is distribution of money, and uh, this is an economic issue, as it was said before. This is true. In order to be a candidate and uh, to go through and uh, to provide advertisement that do um, dominates, and in Sweden there is no political advertisement, and in Germany they don't have this, and in other European countries it is banned. This is nonsense to put your face where somewhere on posters on the street, this is bad taste. And uh, here they believe that this is the main instrument of influence on so-called electorate, not on conscious people, but on some uh, electorate. And uh, 
millions have spent for this, and uh, this practice leads to the fact that uh, only rich people can get into politics and to use these finances. And when we ask people, why do you take these food packages and you uh, take money, uh, do you understand that this is the new cycle of robbing the budget? Uh, don't you understand this? You took it this time and people, they will rob you for this and they will keep you on, um, uh, on a bad diet. But people continue to take these things and this is connected also with economic issues. So I uh, support the policy of uh, uh, supporting financially su uh, su financial support of the parties and uh, maybe there should be not 10% uh, for women but 30% for women. So maybe uh, the heads of the parties will think more about this issue then. and this will influence on everything, on science and education, diplomacy. Because uh, in diplomacy we have less than 1% of women who are ambassadors and uh, there there is also men's club and they believe that only men can keep the strike and uh, look at uh, uh, Margaret Thatcher, uh, May and uh, 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 Angela Merkel. So they formulate strategies, they lead the policy. So we should break the stereotypes and we should introduce modern practices. Thank you very much. And uh, at the end of the discussion, I would like to say about the general context, uh, context and to look at Ukraine uh, concerning uh, psychological data. And uh, now, with great pleasure, I give the floor to our next speaker, um, Svetlana Hutka, sociologist, uh, general director of U World Foundation, uh, scientific director of the NGO Social Indicators. Thank you very much. When we speak about Ukrainian context, uh, maybe it looks uh, rather positive. If we look at uh, the story of political rights and uh, political activity of women, we have this process for 100 years, and uh, we are now at zero positions. If we look at Global Institute of Gender Gap in different spheres of life, in political sphere. In, uh, we uh, we uh, were on uh, 103rd place, and uh, it's closer to Venezuela, but these countries, they uh, didn't have such a long um, um, term of um, uh, uh, so, um, so we had the right to vote uh, during the longer period than they did, and also uh, the level of uh, solidarity, uh, despite all the measures that are taken. Uh, so, except those quotas, we do not have proper mechanism to force uh, uh, the uh, to force them to. Um, involve women into politics and uh, uh, there are many women uh, uh, in power in uh, other countries and Ukraine. We do not have this participating solidarity and uh, support at the level of uh, financing at level of political associations in the regions uh, on the whole in order to say about the necessity of um, uh, rejection of those quotas. The second aspect is disproportionate uh, 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 con social contracts, those um, roles in society. Men do not have these 350 roles to be a politician. Uh, he shouldn't have this uh, room for children in the parliament. He shouldn't uh, do household work. And uh, there is some men's club. Uh, there is uh, politically influential groups and uh, um, 
uh, there are many social stereotypes and uh, um, when we are speaking about women politicians uh, of younger age, they believe that gender discrimination in Ukraine is less, but more experienced women say that sexism is uh, um, a serious obstacle and uh, this is a reversed uh, pyramid. Uh, uh, the highest position, it is um, difficult to go up for women. At lower positions, we have 70, 80 percent of women. And uh, um, if, it, if it is not about uh, political and financial influence, and uh, if we are speaking about access to resources, the trend is um, opposite. So at the level of Europe, uh, on the whole, there is such an aspect. The higher the level of opportunities to influence the life of the country, the less women they have there. And if there is a culture of the change of this position, the change of values, and this is happening in the context of the overall modernization, when uh, there is an is uh, issue of gender uh, parity, this correlates with the development and uh, post materialistic values, and uh, this is about more developed countries. And one more aspect we should pay attention to this is the influence of uh, media. There are many stereotypes present uh, sexist stereotype of the role of women, and the role of women as experts is uh, lacking in the media and uh, uh, politics is commanded by w men and uh, we have lack of women's uh, opinion in politics and uh, um, if we are speaking about quotas and uh, the influence from the top and from the bottom we should think about how to combine all this. There are some aspects that are contradictory for example, budget financing of those programs that are connected with gender education and monitoring of uh, gender parity and equality in the political or educational processes. The, they are not provided with finances. Uh, they are provided by external uh, sources, different uh, funds that provide colossal support. But if you, we look at uh, the trend um, and uh, the amount, uh, this is a, a reduction. There is reduction and uh, it goes to the regions. And I would say that uh, it looks confrontational and people do not understand how it will be. Um, we should understand that in order that Ukraine goes to the adequate level of uh, um, proper political representation, we need uh, maybe 100 years. And uh, if we wait for the natural development, this is uh, really difficult and according to the obligations Ukraine undertook, we should have had 30 percent uh, women in the parliament and now we have 12.5 uh, uh, or 13 percent of women are uh, on the top. Uh, that's why we should work more systemically on these issues. And the topic we've discussed uh, uh, about education we do not have massive practice of uh, bringing up uh, political leaders among women, and we need this, and uh, there should be such a practice to form connections locally, and uh, in this way there will be evolution of this institute of the role of women in society. So when uh, before elections urgently to get more finances, they attract women. This is artificial situation. We need more systemic processes. And maybe this is about overall political culture and the rights that women implement. And uh, one of the aspects that looks maybe not so positive 
so this is trust to women in politics. When we speak about abstract attitude to whether women and men can be political leaders, and here in Ukraine it improved 10 years or 12 years ago, the majority of population believed that men are better leaders. And now, uh, roughly speaking, this is 50-50. But if we take uh, real politicians, women, uh, so we do not have a lot of them. And uh, people know three, four uh, women uh, that are recognized by 80% of voters. And uh, others are young politicians. and. Uh, uh, people do not know them well. And I believe that there should be more active work of parties. For example, according to a uh, February poll, uh, the, all the women um, uh, in relation to whom they uh, um, try to establish the um, balance of trust and mistrust, uh, people mistrusted them mostly. But uh, uh, the trust is given more to men. And uh, do, do you cite some research or some empirical research? This is my impression from empirical research. When we are speaking about correlation of uh, trust and mistrust uh, um, in the Ukrainian uh, political sphere, I cannot name any woman who would have positive balance of trust. This is uh, absurd. So. Uh, the more they know this woman, the less they trust her, and the less they know her, the, le the, the less she has chances to participate in politics because um, in political sphere is deeply connected with the media. If people do not recognize you before, it is impossible to promote you in several months before, before in elections. So, and uh, we should work on this in a systemic way. So we have 10 minutes left. So uh, I will add several words. Uh, so uh, it was said that there's lack of women experts, but in Ukraine we have grassroots initiatives to work on this problem, and there is database ask women, and there are many experts from different spheres. Um, the, this is an open database, not only for media specialists, but also for um, any person. So uh, now I would like to give the floor to our audience. If you have questions, please ask. Thank you very much. I am Rostam. I am uh, from the Institute of Modern Knowledge. and. Uh, you said about Angela Merkel, Theresa May, and uh, we have Abdullah. She is the, from Syria, and she is the on, uh, and uh, she contributed to the uh, fall of um, uh, um, Islamic State, and in the territory of Syria, they created Democratic Federation of Northern Syria, and they have army of uh, 60,000 and half of them uh, are women and half of women uh, they uh, are in uh, uh, top positions and about quotas let's create quotas for ethnic groups 70% of Ukrainians and uh, Others, they can have national quotas, for example, 70% Ukrainians, 30% other ethnic groups. So the question is, what is your attitude? 
uh, to the creation of uh, ethnic quotas, as in the north of Syria, they have quotas for women 50-50 and for nations. They have half people who are Arabs and the half of officials, they are Arabs. Uh, so who wants to answer this question? So who wants to answer this question? Maybe I will answer this question because I've mentioned European leaders. Uh, uh, so we speak about European integration, and that's why we've uh, said about uh, Europe. Of course, India, Arab nations, uh, they also can uh, give an example. We should understand that uh, there should be proportional representation and power of all people who live in Ukraine. This is correct. You may look at Crimea. So uh, we do not have proper approach to the situation, and I believe that in the future this will be a great proposal in order to take it into account at the level of legislation. So maybe next question. Please raise your hand. So please. I'm from Cherkasa, Marina Gurianova, an organizer of the Women's Forum, and recently we held uh, the second forum and we've raised the issue about how to attract women that maybe do not want to go into politics, but they are experts who contributed in some areas. And uh, a year ago they didn't want to speak about it, and uh, at this forum we had 80 women and several men on this topic. It was really interesting, and uh, we've invited facilitators, and we've raised these issues, what a woman politician should be like, and uh, the issue of trust, how to overcome problems, how to uh, commit to our obligations, and when a woman becomes known, she loses trust. We spoke about it. Maybe we have a question to Big NGOs, maybe Center UAE. Do you plan to carry out some trainings and in Cherkasy? After this forum, we communicate, we decide what to do next, and uh, we speak among ourselves and uh, we have this information at our office but we do not know what to do next. Thank you very much for your question. I would like to say that 80 participants of the discussion in Cherkasy, this is a wonderful result and I congratulate you on this. This is a good indicator to carry out such discussion in bigger cities. And in Center UAE, we have the experience of the development of a, a brochure of the best practices for women candidates. This was the campaign of 2012, and uh, we launched it, and uh, we are a monitor of the electoral process. We monitor candidates, and it is difficult to combine this with training of the candidates because that would be a conflict of interest for our organization. And uh, this work, in order to be of quality, it should be carried out systemically and constantly. And we lack internal resources in order to deal with this uh, big piece of work. And uh, we have the opportunity to have such discussions and uh, we can come to Cherkasse and uh, listen to the opinion and the experience of such, um, uh, such schools. Uh, I believe that uh, Alena Yena uh, can uh, tell us about this. Thank you very much. I would like to join to what Ina said. Uh, 80 participants of the forum. This is a big uh, audience if we compare it with the first regional women's congress that was held in Odessa. I believe these figures are comparable. Um, National Democratic Institute tries to systemically work on the issues of uh, 
um, the lack of knowledge and provision of uh, awareness campaign and our uh, Women's Academy of Leadership, we provide systemic training of women in order that they took leadership positions in society. These are not only women who decide to be nominated for positions, but also those who believe that they can be leaders, they want to structure their knowledge, they want to know how to unite people around their projects and ideas to create platforms and networks. And uh, recently um, we focused on the grassroots level at the level of communities uh, and uh, they uh, also deliver training uh, for women at different levels at the level of uh, regions, uh, villages, oblasts here in Kiev and in uh, multi party format and in uh, party formats uh, if we speak about women who uh, members of some parties or who think about political career but do not have opportunities to study in the framework of their own political parties, but uh, the efforts of our organization is not enough. We have about 10 applicants uh, per place when we announced the contest for the Academy of Women's Leadership. So we can cover only 10% or even less. And uh, that's why we always uh, speak with our partners and we motivate political parties to create in the parties the centers that provide opportunity for women to study to improve their qualification. And uh, this should be a massive phenomenon in Ukraine because women, even having basic higher education or even two higher educations, before taking decision to go to politics, women, they need more time. Women should nominate herself first before being nominated by political party. And in my work, uh, I didn't have such attitude from men. Men, they are ready for political career. And uh, women, they need solidarity. They need, so they need such programs. And mentorship is really important among women. We are trying in the framework of our programs to integrate this component and I believe that in Ukraine we now have such programs, mentor programs in different spheres for women and I believe that this is a good trend. I would like to provide such an opinion that we need more programs like this science, uh, technology, engineering, mathematics, um, there is stereotype that women are worse in these sectors, but if we have equal conditions in f uh, the, uh, and uh, there in Finland uh, at the age of 15, uh, girls are better in these uh, fields than boys and uh, there should be proper examples of successful women in these areas of mathematics, of engineering and uh, technical sciences, and there should be mentors that uh, uh, inspire uh, girls and when they decide their future. When they see that this is possible, they do not have then these barriers, these um, obstacles our society create. So, and the same with the politics, the stereotypes, they should be overcome and we should have more unions, more associations that carry out proper mentorship and training in such a way we will be able to overcome these problems uh, quicker and to move forward in this. I would like to add one aspect. 
when we are speaking about self-organization, we need more practice in Ukrainian society for women when we are speaking not only face to face, but also about virtual cooperation. And there should be proper mentors and there is pos um, Lean In that was established by women in IT and business uh, and in Ukraine. I founded the office of this global movement. There should be a proper resilience and proactiveness. It should be formed in women. And the peculiarity of this program is that uh, women in circles in the regions, they can create unions uh, that uh, maybe can resolve some local issues, but this practice and the access to global resources, some action plans, what can be done, how to work, and how to work with proper practices, this will allow them to um, get more skills. So we have several minutes left, so if you have a question, please ask. And about Samopomich, why the women deputies didn't want to adopt this Istanbul Convention that is so important for women. Maybe this is a question to the Supreme Council. Unfortunately, I can only say that Samopomich faction does not vote spontaneously. All the decisions are discussed during factions, and when I, they come up with some position, these positions are well grounded always. So maybe brief question. Good afternoon. I would like to ask about overcoming stereotypes. What people from other spheres can do in order to improve the situation on the whole, in order that people know better about gender stereotypes and the problems women face in politics, education, and other spheres. If I am a painter, uh, where can I address concerning this issue? I remind you that we gathered here uh, to speak about the contest about stop censorship and the topic gender equality in Ukrainian politics. And if you deal with the design, you should address other contest. There is special contest for designers and the result of which uh, was the collection of uh, uh, some uh, pictures and uh, um, postcards and uh, it would be great to uh, speak about these issues uh, and to, to provide such discussion for designers as well. And uh, I would like to give the floor to my colleague. Please be brief, Alena. I would like to say about the book that was mentioned. It is called It Was Done By Her, and it was printed by Vidovnitstvo uh, Publishing House, that is called Publishing House. And the uh, uh, Biol Foundation and the National uh, Institute supported this book, and the second volume of this book is being prepared now. So maybe you should pay more attention to the books prepared by this uh, publishing house. And I know that they will they will search for the designer for the book because these books are illustrated with portraits of women. So, and about the issue, what we can do, each of us. So you should communicate at the level you can uh, communicate on. So there are people who want to go into politics and people who are voters. And in order that people trust women and uh, uh, in order that people uh, see that uh, these women are not just some someone's 
uh, wives uh, and uh, th they really can contribute uh, and women they should grow and go into politics but we should bring men back to their families because otherwise they will have double load they have children they have housework if uh, uh, these chores are not divided, women will be overloaded. So, and this will change our conscience and what we can do in our life. So, this is a good incentive for the end of our discussion. And uh, um, I remind to you that we had in uh, Brazil Anna Devga Polova. Долгополо, Лена Йена, Светлана Залищук, Светлана Худка, Александр Черненко, Наталья Шульга, Ирина Славинска. Thank you very much.